Today we are on to lecture 30 connected with automatic tuning of filters and review of filter design. So, this is the last lecture on filters. Review. We had in the last lecture talked about frequency compensation. Now, that frequency compensation uh, for the double integrator loop can be done in several ways. One is the non ideal effect of the op amp that is gain, uh, finite gain bandwidth product affecting the integrators and the summing amplifier can be compensated for by changing the summing amplifier to a modified structure. So, that the delay caused by the integrators and the summing amplifier can be compensated for by the modification of the summing amplifier. Let us see how it is done. Uh, we have the summing amplifier which is normally made up of a single op amp with two resistors one for the double integrator loop or resonator block and the other for the Q forming loop. So, that this is the summation you might as you improve increase the order you can have more summing okay, resulting in uh, uh, modification of the summing amplifier which means actually there can be uh, uh, depending upon the order R by M okay, such uh, effective resistance okay, R R R M such resistance resulting in effective R by M. Now, how to compensate for the delay error caused by this? If it is just a first order system with this feedback okay, directly from here then the loop gain is G B by S okay, and then this resistance R by M plus uh, R by M divided by R by M plus R is the feedback factor along with the G B by S forms the loop gain. So, that results in the uh, sort of amplifier having a phase error if it is a uh, sort of ideal uh, summing for this loop it is minus 1 and uh, for this loop also again minus 1 getting added adding these 2 voltages it will be 1 plus okay, 1 plus m into s by g b. So, resulting in a lag okay, additional lag error of 1 plus m uh, j omega by g b okay, causing uh, angle phase error corresponding to delta phi which is equal to minus 1 plus m evaluated at omega naught the extreme frequency end of the band of usefulness. So, that is the uh, lag error caused by the op amp gain bandwidth product. So, now modifying that using that op amp G B by S and another as a buffer stage which is going to be 1 by 1 plus 1 over loop gain of that which is G B by S of this. Okay and 1 by 3 here. So, if it is R by n that will be resulting in 1 by 1 plus n plus 1 s by g b. So, this is the general thing. So, when you combine this together to form a feedback pair then we have the general summing changing to minus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 over loop gain which is dB by S into this. Okay. So, 1 plus M which corresponds to this feedback okay, into okay, dB by S. So, it will be S by dB into 1 plus 1 plus N S by dB. So, it becomes a second order system okay, with a transfer function of this type 
okay, from here to here. If you take the output here now, this will be multiplied by 1 plus, okay, from here, here to here it is 1 by 1 plus n plus 1 s by g b. So, here it will be n plus 1 s by g b. So, both the numerator and the denominator have the error cropping up which is dependent on g b. So, here it is 1 plus n s by g b, here it is 1 plus m s by g b, the other one is the second order factor. So, if you make n equal to m, in this case we have made it equal to 2. So, it is perfectly compensated for phase, okay, n equal to m. n greater than m, you have a lead error. So, whatever lag is there due to the integrators can be compensated by appropriate lead error, lead error in this combination. So, this is a nice technique for compensating for any complex feedback loop involving feedback amplifiers. Okay. Then we went over to switched capacitor filters and uh, these switched capacitor filters okay, wherein the resistance of the integrator is replaced by okay, a capacitor. Okay. So, in the following manner, connected to the input for some time in the first phase and connected to the virtual ground transferring the charge to C1 resulted in an R equivalent which was T time of the clock, time period of the clock okay, divided by C. So, this way the uh, RC time constant of the integrator okay, changed over to okay, T by C into C1. They become a ratio of capacitors and the clock frequency 1 over T. So, that way it became programmable. However, switching is one of the things that introduces noise in the system again which requires further filtering by analog filters. So, we are now suggesting how analog filters themselves can be tuned fairly accurately by a tuning manual tuning of the second order that is this, this was also mentioned earlier. So, we have the voltage control filter that has been designed by transforming the integrator into multiplier in combination with the integrator. So, it became voltage controllable. So, the time constant became V c by 10 R c that is the normalizing frequency omega naught of the uh, second order filter. So, now how to tune this? The exercise is that we have B p sin omega reference t coming to the input of this and you are permitted to change V c so as to make this filter get exactly tuned to the omega reference. That means, omega naught has to become equal to omega reference by changing V c. That can be tested out using a phase detector because we had shown that if you take either the low pass or high pass output, okay, you have 90 degree phase shift occurring at omega equal to omega naught. Okay. If incoming frequency omega is omega reference, then at exactly omega naught equal to omega reference, the phase shift between low pass output or high pass output and input is going to be pi by 2. So, this phase shift of pi by 2 can be tested by the multiplier which is going to give at this point V average which is V p sin omega reference t and this will be V p dash sin omega reference t plus phi that means this will be V p V p dash by 20 cos phi. So, phi equal to pi by 2 this average is going to 0 that is a measure of tuning that was what was covered in the last lecture also and we had seen how uh, in simulation 
we could accurately adjust this voltage to go to 0 thereby making sure that omega naught is exactly equal to omega reference. So, this mode of thing is going to be automatized now. This KVCF now is nothing but sensitivity of the VCF what is it that is the change in phase at this point okay delta phi by delta Vc is defined as sensitivity of voltage control filter. How the uh, phase changes here of this filter as Vc changes okay. So, this is nothing but delta phi by delta omega naught into delta omega naught by delta Vc. Omega naught depends upon Vc okay uh, in this following manner. It may be dependent upon in any functional manner we do not really care it need not be necessarily linear. So, at around that po operating point Vcq we can find out okay how delta omega naught varies with delta Vc that is what is called KVC of okay. So, that depends upon how phase changes with uh, frequency okay omega naught how phase changes with frequency omega naught. Please remember that omega reference the incoming frequency here is fixed okay. So, we have to now find out how phase changes with omega naught on omega naught changes with respect to Vc in the following manner. So, delta omega naught by delta Vc is 1 by 10 Rc if it is linear otherwise you have to take the particular mathematical expression to derive the value of the slope around uh, the omega naught and KPD is nothing but it is delta V average by delta phi it is input is phase change and its output is the average voltage. So, delta V average by delta phi is called KPD the sensitivity factor of the phase detector. Okay. So, these parameters are important okay, in a situation when the whole thing is put in a loop in automatic frequency control. So, let us see what that is that is nothing but what is called as phase lock loop let us see what it is. So, here the filter now is designed okay, such that the multiplier makes it voltage controllable we have a 0.8 r directly going to the integrator and an r going through the multiplier and coming to the input of the integrator. So, effective resistance of the integrator is now that is what is determined by this 0.8 r shunted by what is determined by the control voltage okay. So, this equivalent resistance here is this v, uh, v i you other which was directly coming here okay is now modified by this factor of V c by 10. So, this multiplier is V x V y by 10 its reference voltage is 10 volts. So, we have this resistance changing as this resistance is changed okay in terms of V c in the following manner. So, the current is now going to be changed from earlier V i by r to V i this is V i okay or uh, V naught okay uh, V c by 10. So, the current is instead of V naught by r becomes V naught V c by 10 r or r is replaced here by 10 r by V c. So, effective resistance of the integrator is 10 r by V c in parallel with 0 0.8 r. So, V c for this is permitted to change from plus 10 volts to minus 10 volts that is the range within which the multiplier functions right. So, uh, when it is plus 10 volts it is 0 0.8 r in parallel with r when it is minus 10 volts it is 0 0.8 r in parallel with minus 10 r both are resulting in effective positive resistance. So, 
one case is point 8 r parallel r that is one limit that is the uh, highest uh, that is lowest value of resistance the highest value of resistance is point 8 r okay parallel okay minus r when we see takes minus 10 volts so point 8 r okay parallel r is roughly equal to r by 2 okay and point 8 r parallel minus r is point 8 r into r okay divided by point 2 r. So, it is changing by about 4 times r right. So, the range of r is going to be changing when we see changes from minus 10 to plus 10 volts r is going to change from okay 4 r to almost uh, 0.8 r parallel r. So, that is it it is about uh, okay point uh, 4 r. So, about a tenfold variation of resistance occurs because of this arrangement. So, let us remember this for calculating what is called the lock range of this PLL. It is going to be locked now to 90 degrees what how does it happen? This multiplier phase detector this is the phase detector the output is now okay uh, being fed to an integrator which is a low pass filter okay this R dash with Miller capacitor of C into N R is what is low pass filtering actually this is an ideal integrator now. So, this is nothing but a PID control okay where this voltage okay which is the V reference in this case it is 0. So, the average is compared to V reference which fixes up the phase V reference here is 0 because we want this voltage to go to 0 average right. So, when the control works as negative feedback satisfactorily that becomes negative feedback only when we take the output from low pass not from high pass it becomes high uh, what is a positive feedback if you take the output from high pass. So, the uh, sign change is important here it is the low pass filter output that is compared with input fed to the phase detector which is formed by the analog supplier and then the integrator and then this control voltage is applied here. Now, this becomes if it is negative feedback it is negative feedback it gives us uh, the automatic control. C for this is taken as 0.1 microfarad R is 1 K Q is 5 H naught is 1. So, omega uh, reference changes from direct control by V C uh, to slightly indirect control because of this parallel combination of resistances right. So, this kind of thing has been purposely done in order to make sure that wherever it is staying as far as the control voltage of the multiplier uh, come uh, integrator output is concerned as far as this output is concerned it is capable of going only a, uh, to the saturation value of this op amp which hopefully is same as that of the multiplier uh, input limit which is plus minus 10 volts. So, in which case this is the one that sets the limit of lock range for the entire setup ok. Lock range is the range of frequencies of this input over which this locking of phase to 90 degree is going to be working out satisfactorily with loop gain much greater than 1. So, that the error is always close to 0. So, this kind of system level discussion of this phase follower has already been done by us when we discussed most of the analog systems. So, it is nothing but a phase follower which is also nothing but a voltage follower. This V reference can change the phase at which it is getting locked. In this case it is locked to pi by 2. So, this is uh, actually summarizing the uh, phase lock loop here we have the voltage controlled uh, 
filter here this is our uh, input okay which is vp sin omega reference t and this is the control voltage coming from the integrator output okay this is the phase detector so this is connected to reference equal to 0 so that this voltage goes to 0 when the control starts functioning okay so kvcf is the sensitivity of conversion of this uh, phase difference to uh, sort of this uh, input okay uh, to a phase difference okay the input is actually constant here and it is Vc that is changing. So, this Vc change will change the omega naught of this okay such that the low pass filter output phase becomes exactly equal to pi by 2 in order to make this voltage become equal to 0. This is the basic principle of the phase lock loop. If you connect Vp Vp dash cos phi equal to a specific value V reference then the cos phi gets adjusted to that then. Now this is now having sine wave input as far as this input is concerned that frequency has been adjusted to be 1 kilohertz input and 1 volt magnitude. So let us see what happens this is the time of connecting the circuit in simulation. So, one sees this is the band pass output okay and this is the notch output. If it is getting tuned to the incoming frequency and it is a sine wave that frequency must be eliminated in the notch and it should be becoming equal to H naught into Q at the band pass output. So, you can quickly see how the control voltage is now changing from its coefficient value whatever it is. Why at what value of coefficient it is there we can say it must be the natural voltage at which the control loop is not functioning or not getting any input okay omega reference at that point of time the uh, integrator is not having any input okay either from EI or from the output of the low pass in which case integrator uh, output is solely determined by the uh, uh, offset of the op amp which in this case may be uh, about 1 to 2 millivolts and uh, that model has put it at that value and this goes to its saturation because it is having high DC gain it just goes to saturation of plus 10 volts. So from 10 volts it is starting and getting control automatically and settling down at the value at which okay the input of the integrator goes to 0. One end of the integrator V plus is connect uh, that is plus input is connected to ground. So, the minus input also goes to 0 when this reaches V c reaches the value of control voltage required to make omega naught of the filter come exactly equal to omega reference and at that point the band pass output goes to the maximum of uh, 5 volts you can see is roughly equal to 5 volts 4.83. So, there is a small error due to the offset okay which is present. Now <coughs> this same thing f reference is changed what is now done is this reference is changed now from 1 kilohertz to 2 kilohertz you can just see that. 1 to 2 kilohertz amplitude remains same as 1 volt. Now again the control voltage automatically changes of that of the integrator output automatically changes this is the transient it's coming from plus 10 volts going towards the steady state value so as to make the band pass output reach its maximum and notch output reach its minimum 0 right. So the uh, notch output gradually goes to 0 and band pass output goes to its maximum right. So, this is what is seen very uh, readily when we actually do the experimentation. 
Now it is the uh, okay. So this is changed over to square wave input. It doesn't matter what the input is as long as it is periodic. It has certain fundamental and its harmonics. This uh, whole scheme keeps working. It just gets tuned to the fundamental frequency or the uh, what is that the harmonics of the input waveform. Okay, depending upon how close the uh, initial state was, uh, initial state of the filter was. Okay, so uh, square wave input you can see the square wave input. Okay, when you give, let's say VP is the square wave. Okay, so uh, if this square wave obviously is made up of a uh, sine wave fundamental component which is greater in magnitude than the square wave. So, if the square wave magnitude is Vp, we know that the fundamental of the square wave is 4 by pi which means greater than Vp. All the harmonics will be having uh, magnitude reaching a negative peak okay, at, this, at this point okay, where this is peaking. So, um, it is to compensate for that that it has only odd harmonics. So, you can see that is how a square wave is formed that is the first harmonic. Okay. So, you can see it will be 4 by pi times 1 volt V p is 1 volt 4 by into H naught into Q at the band pass out. And at the notch, it will be the square wave minus the fundamental, which will result in the square wave looking as just this. Okay. So, if it is exactly tuned, these two heights will be exactly the same. So, you can see this is what is appearing at the notch. That means, this is the result of, of all the rest of the harmonics of the periodic square wave. Okay. So, this gives you the harmonic content. So, the RMS value of this will straight away give you okay, the uh, harmonic content okay. and this is the fundamental. So, if any periodic waveform is applied it actually locks on to the fundamental okay, and in the notch you can actually measure the uh, harmonics content of that. So, this is a useful thing as a distortion analyzer wherein you give the input waveform which is a pure sine wave okay, uh, and to anything that amplifier or data converter which is required to have its distortion measured. Okay. So, you give that and output of that unit you give it to the self tuned filter automatically you get the fundamental at the output of the band pass and the rest of the harmonic content or distortion in the notch output. So, it can be used as distortion analyzer or spectrum analyzer. So, the usefulness of this is in distortion analyzer and this spectrum analyzer. spectrum analyzer. So, when also uh, signal is deeply buried in noise okay, and the signal is very narrow band signal this is the best way to extract the signal okay, using very high Q. Okay. So, the signal to noise ratio improves drastically in that kind of cell tune filter output. So, square wave input that was earlier 1 kilohertz and the control voltage has remained this. Okay. It is having the double the waveform which is not uh, really DC it is having some unfiltered 2 omega component you can see in this. So, these are very interesting simulations that you must do in order to experience the ultimate in negative feedback in analog. Okay. 
So, this is 2 kilohertz you can see the DC uh, what is that uh, average has shifted now close to 0 and that is that is what you will get okay. Uh, the uh, Vc equal to 0 means the multiplier uh, series resistance has no effect now it is solely determined by 1 kilo uh, ohm okay, or that 0.8 kilo ohm. So, it is going to be uh, uh, 1.56 divided by 0.8 which is close to 2 kilohertz. So, theoretically it fits in very well with the experimentation. So, this is what is called the phase lock loop this is the true phase lock loop it is uh, the frequency uh, can be anything it is all the time locked to 90 degrees in phase okay by this loop. So, the lock range of the system Okay, this is normally decided by the, uh, the for example in this case the uh, control voltage is applied to the multipliers here. So, the multipliers can only work up to plus minus 10 volts and also most of the time the control voltage of this may be only going to up to the saturation level of these op amps. So, whichever is the one that is limiting the loop gain to become okay very low or equal to 0 is the one that decides the lock range of this closed loop system. So, whichever comes first in this particular case we have seen to it that none of the other ranges are limiting except the, um, uh, the saturation state of the amplifier or the multiplier input state that limits the lock range capture range. Now, something about the capture range I would like to tell you now almost all these control systems there is this capture range. So, when it is not having an input fed that is what we talked about the output is also not there. So, we do not know what the output is going to be as far as the multiplier is concerned it just going to pick up some noise and this is going to be at some state or if that also is 0 here we have an offset which is non ideality. Okay, this offset will simply take this because the loop is not closed because input is not there. Input has to be there so that these get the reference inputs okay, to make the whole loop work or make the loop gain much greater than 1. So, bringing this whole system to a situation where all these blocks are in the active region such that the loop gain is much greater than 1 where this error goes towards 0 in this so called integral control system is what is called what is that starting the circuit and capturing the loop. Okay. So, once the loop is captured automatically the error goes to 0 that we have seen okay, and the phase is kept locked and the system has high loop gain uh, almost at all points. Okay. So, because at pi by 2 it has the best sensitivity possible. So, it remains pi by 2 as the frequency gets changed. So, lock range is that range where loop gain is kept much greater than 1 all the time. Capture range is the one where the loop at starting whatever point it is there either plus V c or minus V c is the starting point. At that starting point depending upon the input the low pass filter output does it exist. So, that this into this because the sensitivity of this in this case depends upon V p V p dash by 20 cos phi. So, it depends upon the magnitude V p dash V p is already there let us see then it depends upon V p dash when both V p and V p dash are not there then the sensitivity of this multiplier itself is 0. So, the O loop is not closed. Okay. So, in a basic thing while starting is as soon as you apply V p sin omega t this input is there it does this input output exist in order to facilitate okay, this output to come and change the V c okay, in the proper direction that is the capture range. Okay. Negative feedback loop means this V c should change at that time in such a direction as to bring this error close to 0. Okay. Now, 
this is called self cleaning its application is in terms of uh, what is that this getting locked okay to phase of pi by 2 and it can be used as a distortion analyzer or uh, the uh, what is that spectrum analyzer. Apart from that how to use uh, active RC filters for precision application in integrated circuit where resistances and capacitances have poor tolerance. So, you cannot have precision design of filters done at all. So, then we have to take recourse to tuning. So, you can actually resort to one method wherein this is the filter to be used second order filter you make it voltage controllable and tune it as before okay, as a PLL. So, this BC is derived from the output of the integrator as before it gets tuned automatically to the incoming frequency. The incoming frequency is very accurate. Okay. So, this is what actually tunes it it may be the clock okay, which is very accurately fixed by the crystal. So, this accuracy is unquestionable right. Now, once this is fixed this control voltage is known that is sensed and fed to the ADC and stocked in the memory and output it by the DAC and used until okay, this comes to the uh, what is the calibration cycle again where the loop disk again is closed at which time you cannot use it. So, whenever calibration cycle is coming into picture this calibrates itself accurately and then keeps that control voltage that is sensed at that time here until your measurement is over using the filter at that point of time input is changed to whatever signal that you want to use it for filtering. Okay. So, this is one method another method is you use this self tuned filter as master and make it get tuned this omega naught okay, is omega reference VCM by let us say 10 RMCM okay, by this loop then use the same control voltage for identical structure as slaves. So, this structure is exactly similar to the master here here any number. So, apply the same control voltage. So, VCS by 10 RSCS of this structure is omega slave. Now, since VCS is same as VCM we have to substitute for this VCS this VCM then we get omega reference by omega S as ratio of resistors okay. and therefore, we are able to tune this exactly this slave filter. this slave filter as omega slave is equal to omega master which is nothing but omega reference okay, into R s C s okay, divided by R m C m. Okay. So, omega uh, S yes, by omega reference is oh sorry R m C m by R s C s ratio of resistors and ratio of capacitors. So, omega S yes, therefore, is equal to R m C m into omega reference by R s C s. Okay. So, this is similar to the switched capacitor thing, but even better because there is no switching at all involved and it is continuous time. You can keep this connected as a higher order filter by connecting this output to this input and so on any number of slaves. This becomes a programmable filter the moment you change omega reference the uh, normalizing frequency of all the slaves change simultaneously. So, that if you have built uh, let us say nth order butterworth, it remains nth order except its bandwidth keeps changing. Uh, just like in this switched capacitor the programmability feature which is there in switched capacitor comes to this also. And ratio of components is maintained 
at a better accuracy than the uh, absolute values. So, let us now consider another topic design of fourth order band pass or band stop is the aim. Without going into any uh, high level mathematics, let us try to design a fourth order filter just by knowing something about the second order band pass prototype. Center frequency is 5.3 kilohertz, maximally flat magnitude butterworth is required. Second order state space filter will have R equal to 30 kilo ohm, C equal to 1 nanofarad. We have purposely used a uh, universal active filter block 42 okay, and the model of this is incorporated in TNRTI. So, one can easily simulate this and test exactly. So, for a Q of 10, H naught of 1, the second order filter has been built. So, it is going to be exactly 5.3 kilohertz center frequency and H naught into Q. So, uh, the uh, it is going to be uh, about 20 decibels okay, with uh, H naught into Q is 10. Okay. So, now cascading to second order filter what happens? This is the main principle to be understood. By cascading two second order filters with a certain Q, the uh, bandwidth of the filter becomes narrower. Right? So, wherever it was getting halved, now it is going to get one fourth, right? quarter of the earlier thing. That means it becomes narrower. So, cascading or synchronously tuned amplifiers cascaded cause reduction of bandwidth that is the basic principle. Whereas, if you want to broadband cascading stagger tuned amplifiers which are tuned differently from okay, uh, the e each of it is staggered from the other. Okay. So, now from a single tuned circuit right second order we are actually cascading instead of two stages with the same center frequency once with staggered from this by amount of bandwidth itself right. So, this distance should correspond to the bandwidth okay, of the original thing. So, if that happens then it becomes maximally flat. So, this math mathematics of this is demonstrated here by 1 by 1 plus x square x minus alpha x plus alpha are the two points at which the center frequency is located. So, by alpha it has been changed. So, by doing the mathematics you can show that it becomes maximally flat okay, when x is equal to uh, that is alpha equal to 1. So, that means the bandwidth is the separation from 0 okay, of these two filters. Then it becomes maximally flat. We have just shown you the demonstration for alpha equal to 1.1. That means now if you just e exceed the optimum then there is this small ripple that comes. Uh, it is equivalent to what is called Chebyshev filter maximally flat one is called butterworth. Okay. So, alpha equal to 1 is butterworth we have increased the alpha to 1.1. This is actually simulated we have act the first filter at uh, let us say 5.3. So, okay. cascaded to another stagger tuned one the distance is about 10 percent because Q is uh, equal to 10 is what is chosen. Okay. So, uh, uh, the uh, that is 10 percent distance we have changed one of those uh, the two resistances from original value of 30 k to 33. So, the frequency gets shifted down okay. and now you can see 
that it has become maximally flat over that area. This is the region where it has the in decrease and increase here and make it maximally flat okay, over the widest possible region. So, if you just increase this distance further away from this optimum value, so we have increased it further and shown you the effect of the ripple in the pass band that is the Chebyshev filter. Okay. So, it is not very easy, uh, difficult to uh, transit from Butterworth to Chebyshev by merely uh, manipulating the staggering of these band pass filters. Okay. So, that is what is demonstrated here. This is the right, other uh, filter which was originally at 5.3. Now it is staggered more, more than 10 percent. Now notch filters. So we have uh, the same filter being used as notch 5.3 k with a staggered notch cascaded to it, both of which are second order notch filters. So they are uh, initially we tried it with 5.3 and 5.3 at this same point notch is occurring this is called synchronously tuned. So, then it is the notch depth like the band pass output okay, became square of the original H naught Q square okay. like that here the notch uh, this is lower than uh, 1. So, it becomes still lower when you multiply with okay, the same quantity again. So, <coughs> we stagger now. Why should we stagger? Because we are not sure of the fact accuracy of notch. So, it may be anywhere within this range. So, this is a notch and we have coupled it with another staggered notch now. So, okay, that resulted in a composite characteristic which is having double notch okay, in its characteristic okay, or there is ripple in the stop band now. So, by uh, it is only changed by 5 percent if you change it more what will happen is transmission okay, is going to increase. So, that is what we do not want this is almost less than 30 decibels okay, of transmission. So, if they are coming close the transmission is better. So, review of filter structures right. Patavat and Chebyshev filters are basically all pole filters useful when white noise dominates over signal. Rates of attenuation at the pass band edge are slow that is the thing. These are mainly all pole filters useful particularly when white noise dominates the signal okay. or we are now comparing with white noise and colored noise. Colored noise means narrow band noise. White noise means it is uniformly spread all over the band stop band. It is there in the pass band, but we cannot do anything about it. Dominant colored noise is not effectively removed by these filters. Inverse Chebyshev and elliptic filters have poles and zeros. Presence of zeros helps in eliminating narrow band dominant noise components in the stop band. Attenuation in the stop band is decided by n minus 1 num m number of poles. Okay because uh, n is the number of poles and m is the number of zeros. It is only n minus m poles okay, ultimately deciding the stop band attenuation. When white noise is dominant signal to noise ratio improvement is not as much as that of all pole filters because of this. So, depending upon the kind of noise that is available we decide about the filter. 
input output relationship of a second order filter with a 0 this is the way it is this 0 okay is bringing about a 0 in the stop pan this denominator is bringing about the peak in the pass pan. So, let us understand this for a second order filter okay this is the uh, square of the uh, magnitude function input output relationship of all four filters okay is just this for the second order. So, it is peaking in the pass pan. So, starting from 1 it is going to a peak the 0 is characterized by outside the band let us see. So, outside the band is indicated x equal to 1 is within the band okay, up to and this will correspond to x is equal to square root of 2 that means 1.41 times the uh, what is the pass band h or normalizing frequency. So, that is where the 0 is located okay. So, root 2 times let us say omega naught or omega p x is equal to omega by omega p. So, uh, uh, here it is getting a peak at a frequency which is omega p into square root of 1 minus 1 by 2 q square this we had derived earlier and the peak value is q p directly proportional to q p 1 minus 1 by 4 q p square okay this is 1 that is the peak if it is h naught this is h naught into q p. So, that is the plot that has been given here this is the peaking point you can see the uh, whatever we have written earlier okay that is the frequency at which peak occurs. So, the peak for high q circuits is pretty close to the uh, normalizing frequency this is how it is got. So, we have it here now for q p equal to 2 and alpha equal to 0.5 this is what is got that is getting compared with okay. You can see that it peaks and goes to a 0 and what is that that is nothing but the elliptic filter that we have earlier uh, called that with ripple in the pass band and ripple in the stop band. But it is uh, permitting lot of white noise to come through. Here it has been optimized q p equal to 1 is made okay, for it to become maximally flat instead of peaking. So, for this value of alpha equal to 0.5 you get q p as 1 by making the numerator polynomial have the same coefficient as the denominator polynomial. Addition of another first order okay, can get rid of the white noise okay, it goes to 0 here right and you can optimize it in the pass band by making q p now equal to 1 over root 2. So, this is the design beta equal to 0.5 you can get alpha equal to 0.5 q p can become equal to okay, 1 over root 2 that is the design. So, these are the uh, responses right in fact so summing up all these things this is how the present day filter design is going to be carried out. Okay. Uh, both digital and analog subsystem many of the present day systems are portable hence battery operated or subsystems have to be designed using the digital device technologies for single chip solutions. So, we have to have low voltage okay, uh, that is being used for the analog subsystems as well 3 volts. So, leaky switches and switching noise in switched capacitor filter is not a viable option. L replacement method requires too many of these components okay, and there is no flexibility. 
Q enhancement method can lead to uh, one with single device, active device, but less reliable and than the multi-active device structure like by quad. It is also less flexible. H naught, Q and omega naught can be independently fixed in the by quad and that is the ideal building block for current filter design whether they are switched capacitor or state space or master slave filters. So, this uh, sums up the thing the op amp IC UA of 42 is costlier than the uh, filter built using uh, quad op amps. So, currently, but if you make it popular by demand then the cost of that also will come down. Thank you very much for listening to these lectures. We have uh, a follow up lecture on filth oscillators which is nothing but a filter with q equal to infinity, a second order oscillator nothing but the same filter topology that we had already shown okay, earlier that is the harmonic oscillator. So, it starts with again the simulation of second order differential equation with dv by dt coefficient being absent. Thank you.